What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and this is your uh, yeah, kind of daily update. I didn't do one yesterday. I was a Saturday off. Um, yeah, interesting. A few players been linked with today. Arthur from uh, Juventus midfielder. Apparently he's surplus requirements at uh, uh, Poyamonte Calcio, apparently. Um, and also... Aaron Ramsey, as always, which is it's really frustrating at this point because we've literally been linked with Aaron Ramsey now since he left Arsenal and joined Juve. So, I don't, you know, I don't really see the point constantly being named. It's just lazy journalism, which I'm I'm not surprised at. But Arthur's an interesting one because Arthur Arthur's a name that hasn't necessarily cropped up. He's a player that, you know, probably doesn't get as much game time as he deserves for his quality. Um, in the midfield at Juve and you know he's a player that could probably do a good job in the Premier League Ramsey equally knows the Premier League but his wages are ridiculous so I could never see that happening based on where Everton are and the type of players we want to attract etc um, it just wouldn't make sense whereas someone like Arthur possibly could um, another player that is at Juve and a, and a player that I would consider um, is Weston McKinley because he's another player who's an attacking midfielder and again a, another player that I think Juve don't want. Um, Leeds have been linked with him and again for £20 million pounds, it depends how much money Everton have got to spend but we certainly need another attacking midfielder slash winger um, and, and he could do that. He can do that role Um so it'll be interesting to see if Everton do make an approach for people like that. But, you know, they're just three names at the top of my head that we've been linked with from Juve. Um, I, I want to talk about Luca Dean. I want to talk about what's happened because it, it it's really weird. You know, I've seen some people writing that this was confirmed or, or we told Rafa or told the club eight weeks ago we didn't want to be there and that. It just doesn't make sense to me because... He, he hasn't played well for 18 months, two years. No, he hasn't. He certainly hasn't been as good as he was in his first two seasons. But he, he's, he had a connection with the fans. Like, the, the fans would support him. You know, we were saying he was the best left, left back in the world at some points last season, and he, he was poor last season. And I, I just don't understand where it's all gone wrong. Um is it Rafa Benitez? You know, has he fallen out with yet another professional at Everton Football Club? You know, it looks like Marcel Brands has gone. It, You know, it looks like um, James left under weird circumstances. Luca Dean. It all doesn't... It doesn't make sense. And equally now, it's really weird, but people are vilifying Luca Dean on Twitter. Like they're, they're genuinely saying, you know, if he doesn't want to play for us, he needs to leave, etc. And... Although I do agree with that sentiment, it doesn't make sense because Luca Dean's... The one thing I would say about Luca Dean is I've never looked at him and thought he's not arsed. If he's had a good game or not, I don't know. But that doesn't just switch off. He doesn't just go from being a, a player who wants to play for Everton to a player who doesn't want to play for Everton. It doesn't make sense. Um, so something, it just doesn't... It all doesn't sit well with me regarding Luke Dean. It really doesn't. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm more. I'm more in support of Luke Dean than I am Rafa Benitez. Um, I, I don't. I don't like Rafa. Um, I, I have been more than prepared to back him, but he's still only won seven points in thirty-five or something like that, and that that to me isn't a man that deserves the the scope and change. That Everton need, you know, he's he's got rid of the director of football. Fundamentally, Hamez left in the summer, when when he probably did have a little bit more clout. But I don't understand how the board can listen to someone who's had poor results like he has. I get he's had injuries and that. I understand that. It just there was games where we wasn't as bad as this, like Wolves, for example, and we were horrendous. Um, so it, it just. It just doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't sit well with me that we're letting a former red fundamentally dictate the future of Everton Football Club. Um, but I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. 
you know, I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. You know, we've also been linked with this right back from Mets, which is fine. But again, you know, he's. I, I can't believe we're signing a left back in in front of a right back. We need we've needed a right back for years. We've needed a right back for probably four years, and the fact that one hasn't came in and nothing solid has happened, and yet this is another left back that we've signed. It all doesn't make sense to me. So I'm slightly disappointed. Um, I, I, I look forward to seeing this young 22-year-old uh, Ukrainian left back playing. Um, he, he does seem to have a lot of good attributes. I think he's going to have to adapt to the Premier League and maybe this season, you know, this season is a write-off for whatever hopes we had, if you get what I mean. I, I think it'll be a pretty poor season. But what that does allow because I don't think we'd be in any trouble of going down, is allow us to experiment, allow us to learn what squad's best, allow us to test what player's best. So maybe it is a good move bringing him in now um, and having that full sort of six months to sort of really understand the Premier League and go into next season, being uh, just no doubt the best left back in the world. <laughs> um, he is dynamic, he is creative, he can carry the ball, he can beat a man, he can do everything. But statistically, and I don't really like stats, but statistically he's worse than Luca Dean in every area apart from ball retention. And that scares the shit out of me. You've got a French international, 28 years old, who up until a few weeks ago, I would say loved Everton Football Club and its fans and the support that we give him, to a Ukrainian 22-year-old who's never played in the Premier League, who... Is a bit of a gamble. And we've gone from moves where I was hoping we wouldn't be spending lots of money to spending 20 million quid on the guy. And, that, and that's not a small amount of money when you think Luca Dean was only 16 from Barcelona. So, yeah, a few worries. Uh, Mina's also still being linked with a move away. Um, and, I, and I suspect that whether it's now or in the summer, I suspect he will leave. And I'm gutted about that because I love Yuri Mina, but he's, um, he's just too injury prone. And, and Rafa alluded to it the other day. I think he was really pissed off the other day when he said in his press conference, you know, the team is injury prone. He was saying about specific players. So that's another one. Um, Alex Wobie's deleted his, um, his, his Instagram post about Everton. And also, um, I think you can't comment on his post now. Um, there's no need for abuse, which is what he appears to have received. I think, it, look, I think when you're in a position where you earn a lot of money and you're doing a dream job that a lot of us can only dream of doing, it's very easy to get over frustrated. Um, but equally, just like I do with standing in front of a video, you do put yourself in the spotlight where people can take shots at you, whether it's your appearance, whether it's your ability, whether it's your good, your bad, or you're not. Sometimes it's constructive, sometimes it's not. In my last video after the Chelsea game, I said about Alex Iwobi that I wish, and it, and it was it was criticism, but it was constructive criticism. I would never dig him out for any of his personality traits or anything. And I said to him, I wish he'd focus on one area of his game and, and, and whatever position that wants to be. You know, if he wants to be a number 10, concentrate on that, work on his vision. Work on his, you know, ability to pick up the ball, turn quickly and pass. There's players in and around Everton or there's other coaches that Everton can get involved with to get assets. Because he is an asset. You know, we spent £35 million on Alex Iwobi, um to, to help him uh, kick some of those extra skills into gear. You know, do extra things. I remember a few years ago, I seem to remember that we bought in sprint training for Lukaku, if I'm not mistaken, from a, an international sprint runner. You know, it, it, just because we wanted him to be that yard quicker. I can't quite remember. It might not have been Lukaku. But what I'm saying is there's, there's players or there's coaches in this world that can help Alex be what type of player he wants, whether it's a right winger, whether it's a right back, left back, striker, number 10, it doesn't really matter. But there's people who can help him, who have played at that elite level, who can watch him on a consistent basis and say, right, you haven't quite done this right. This is how we need to improve. That's not a negative. But some people just go straight into 
straight into it. And everyone is guilty of it. I've been guilty of it in the past. I've sat there and gone, he's not a footballer. I said it two weeks ago. He's not a footballer. But when you really come back and take the emotion out of it, there's got to be ways we can improve these players. Because at some point, these players were really good and got the opportunity to play in, in top teams you know, through the academies, they broke through when other people didn't. How? Why? What was it? And we need to tap into that. I always think that people look at raw talent and they go, oh, they're very raw. But raw's what's got them here. Raw, raw talent is what's got them here. And it's now how we learn it. Now, look, Alex is slightly older than a, a, a younger professional has just broke through. But... Genuinely, if you strip him back and you teach him a, a, a position or a style of play or to do something, he's more than capable of learning it because he is a professional footballer. He knows what he's doing. He just sometimes, I don't know, for whatever reason, doesn't execute it. So that's my comment on Alex Iwobi. Um I don't think it should ever come to people having to shut their social medias down. I think, um, I'll, I think some of the comments that I saw were, were wrong. Simple as that. Um, but I, I, whether it's Everton or not, um, because I, I do think the relationship at this point has probably become too strained, um, I, I think he's got to learn one role and focus on it. Because everyone assumed he was a left or right winger, yet he come out in the summer and said he wants to be a number 10, that's his best position. And none of us know. I don't remember him ever playing a number 10 for Arsenal. And I don't think I'd, before that I'd ever seen him play a number 10 for Everton. So you've got to understand these things. And we're, we're three or four years down the line with Alex at this point. And, and there's other players in this team who we don't get the best out of. You know, we, we don't get the best out of them. That's something on us. That's something on us. You can never say, you know, when you look at a, a Pep Guardiola team, you can genuinely say that Pep Guardiola seems to improve players. David Moyes used to do it certainly with defenders and midfielders. He used to improve them. He was he didn't do it with strikers, but he certainly did it with defenders and midfielders. And I think Alex probably just needs a manager who can help him improve those things. Um yeah, apart from that, that is really it. There's not there's not a huge amount going on. Um I've rambled a little bit but you know, it was just a bit of an update, really. And, um, yeah, guys, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Peace.